Hi, everyone. Thanks for being here. My name is Mike Boland, and I'm Chief Analyst of Artillery Intelligence and Editor-in-Chief at AR Insider. And in that role, I spend a lot of time looking at the ways AR can transform life, work, and business. So over the next 10 to 15 minutes, I hope to go over where we are now in AR's life cycle, where we're headed next, and what does that all mean for lens creators who are the fuel for what we call the augmented age. So let's jump right in, starting with where we are today in this AR journey. So I like to look at historical parallels, and I started my career around the time of the dot-com boom and bust, which some of you with gray hair like me may remember. And whether or not you were there, we often characterize that period as overblown expectations for the transformational impact of the web and e-commerce. But when looking back at that period in jest, we often forget that all of those high-flying projections actually ended up coming true, and some were even exceeded. But not until three to five years after everyone expected, and in slightly different forms. And I think that's where we sit today with AR with lots of growth still to come. And it hasn't had a boom and bust cycle that's as pronounced as the dot-com bubble, but there have been some ups and downs. Regardless, AR will be life-changing and represent a new visually oriented way that we interface with the world around us, enlivening it with digital content for work and play and social connection. Now, to wrap some numbers around that claim, Artillery Intelligence projects there were 836 million global AR users last year, growing to 1.7 billion by 2026. And to put that into perspective, that outer year figure is about 21% of the world's population, which is a huge number, but also represents ample room to grow into. And the impact won't just come from usage, but how that translates to business opportunity. So for example, one of the most active and revenue generated generating segments in AR today is brand marketing. So demonstrating products with greater dimension resonates with brand marketers who've spent most of the past two decades confined to tiny boxes in mobile banner ads. And AR lets them break out of those confines and literally think outside the box by letting consumers visualize products in their full 3D glory on faces and spaces, as I like to say. Now, beyond creative juices, AR's appeal in marketing lies in its measurable business outcomes. So AR marketing, such as sponsored lenses, demonstrates real performance relative to 2D benchmarks. So we're talking everything from upper funnel engagement, such as dwell times of up to five minutes per activation, to lower funnel action, such as tripling e-commerce conversion rates. And though there's been a great deal of adoption and excitement among brand marketers for all these reasons, we've barely scratched the surface. According to Artillery Intelligence, 3.3 billion will be spent this year on AR ad placements such as sponsored lenses. But once again, to put that into perspective, that's half a percent of the 738 billion spent globally every year on advertising. So the good news is that we have lots of headroom to grow into. And as that gap closes, astute lens creators will be in high demand, as we'll get into in just a bit. Moving on to our next topic, where are things moving next? And I'd like to stick with that theme of headroom for AR adoption among brand marketers. And there are a few ways that that will play out. So one, going back to some historical examples, marketing technologies among brands tend to follow common adoption patterns. So we first see early adopters that eagerly pick up emerging tech and start to develop best practices and validate its effectiveness. And that's what we're seeing now from AR adoptive brands today from Puma to Prada. But as that adoption gradually escalates, it reaches a tipping point when it flips from a nice to have to a need to have. It becomes table stakes and brands that don't offer things like virtual try-ons will be seen as lacking something and they'll lose business because of it. And think of that like digital images in e-commerce today. It's hard to imagine a day when online shopping didn't include product images from every angle, but that was once the case. And just like it eventually reached ubiquity, the same will happen with AR as competitive pressure gradually ratchets up that brand adoption. So there will also be macroeconomic drivers. So to address the elephant in the room, we're in an economic downturn and advertising and marketing budgets are usually among the first things to be cut during such 
shift periods. But what often gets cut is legacy media as brands are forced to rethink their marketing mix. And conversely, emerging and performance formats actually fare well as they get the chance to shine when marketers are open to try new things and form new habits. And to throw another historical lesson at you, this is precisely what happened with search advertising in the mid 2000s and social advertising after the late 2000s financial crisis, both inflected during these periods when everything was sort of shaken up. So what does this all mean for creators and developers? In short, as AR adoption ratchets up among brand marketers, they'll need lots of creative talent. So creators and developers will hold all the cards and will be in high demand. And this reminds me of the value that was bestowed on web and app developers over the past decade. It turned out to be a heck of a career choice. And that's where we now sit with AR creation. It'll have not only lots of job security, but lots of leverage. In other words, job markets are all about supply and demand. And when supply is low and demand is high, in this case for a flood of AR creation needs that we project, the price goes up. And that price translates to Lens developer's income. And we're already seeing that. A few examples we've tracked include Lens developers that are making anywhere from 750,000 to 1.2 million per year at the high end. And in most cases, they got started simply by creating lenses as a hobby and a passion. And from there, they refined their skills and caught the eyes of brand marketers who reached out with lucrative offers. Now today, lens developers are luckier because there are more and more tools baked into developer platforms like Lens Studio. So you can showcase your work and build a portfolio and refine your skills. And in some cases, there are even networking tools that play matchmaker in talent marketplaces for AR projects. So take advantage of those tools. It's not only about getting matched up to paid work, but networking with other creators and gaining inspiration from them. Now I want to spend a little time drilling down on that concept of inspiration. It'll be critical because lens development standards and use cases will be a moving target. So in addition to fun and whimsical lenses, we see a trend towards more practical utilities for our everyday lives. So for example, we're talking about AR that helps you identify products in the world around you and buy those products on the spot or find out more about the new restaurant that just opened up on your block by simply pointing your phone at it. And it'll include things like 3D navigation and finding the quickest way to your airport gate during a tight layover. And to draw on yet another historical lesson, this expansion from play to productive is a common pattern. So think about the web today. Its killer apps are mostly utilities. So we're talking search and email, weather and news. And these are not only useful functions, but they're high frequency activities. And we expect AR to follow that same path. But don't get me wrong, we'll also still have lots of fun in games in AR, just like we do today on the web. Now, as part of that expansion from play to productive, another key evolution is underway in AR, and that's the expansion from the front-facing camera to the rear-facing camera to augment the broader canvas of the physical world as opposed to just selfies. And this shift is important because it will unlock countless new use cases and creative lens formats. And I say that simply because the world, seen through your smartphone camera, is a big place. And beginning to explore that canvas with new lens formats and use cases is aligned with another key trend we're tracking, which is the looming arrival of consumer AR glasses. And that's simply because with AR glasses, all lenses are world-facing. Now, to be clear, the day when we're all wearing AR glasses is still years away for technological and cultural reasons. But as that day approaches, world-facing lenses will get lots of lead time to develop. So to put that another way, when AR glasses finally do arrive, smart creators and developers will already have had a few years from now until then to develop the right muscles and hit the ground running with world-facing AR killer apps. So what will those apps look like? The fun part is that we don't know yet. So just like when the iPhone first launched, no one conceptualized native apps like Uber and Foursquare and Spotify and Snapchat. It took a few years of living with that new form factor 
for that native thinking to really seep into the developer mindset. So we project the same thing to happen during this ongoing shift to world-facing AR over the next few years, and it'll be an exciting time. So I, for one, would like to see more AR apps that guide me through home improvement projects and testing out paint colors virtually, or tell me more about the actors in a movie I'm watching or the players in a football game I'm watching, or an AR visualization app that knows my entire wardrobe and can help me pick out what to wear to work every day and let me virtually try on and swipe through different outfit combinations. So altogether, the possibilities are pretty expansive, and these are just a few ideas from a non-creative pundit. We can't wait to see what more creative minds from the Lens Creator universe come up with. So thank you for watching. I hope this inspires you as you move into next year, and please enjoy LensFest.